that was released 2015. You know, I, I was just looking, the interaction of dietary compounds, uh, we, we have actually been reviewing this for the last several months now. And so it's going to be kind of kind of fun. We're we're actually getting getting uh, about done with this. So um, you know, I know you've had a lot of folks. I mean, today we're going to talk about some prebiotics, and then we have diet derived uh, bioactive metabolites produced by the gut's uh, microbiota. And uh, so we'll be talking a little bit more about polyphenols and and then vitamins, and then we're going to look at the conclusions that, that were uh, drawn from this study, and then we're going to move on. Yep. What caught my attention uh, on something you brought up a while back, which mm -hmm. was, I guess, became more interesting for me, is we're always talking about gut bacteria. Right. And there's always whatever reality or height, you know, on by bacteria of all kinds of right out. Oh know. yeah. But then when you mentioned uh, like green tea activates the growth of bacteria, mm -hmm. good bacteria, and, mm -hmm. and that caught my attention because really that's is there any other list of uh, things that create? I mean I know fiber does. I sure. Know fiber does. Right. And, and, but it just what else is out there? Uh, there's papaya and, and uh, there's what papaya papaya yeah and and I think that that's the question that a lot of a lot of people have when we when we talk about uh, you know probiotics prebiotics right. you know there, there's uh, you know some some disconnect they're going okay so what is it that actually creates that that healthy uh, you know gut flora well like you said fiber uh, is is going to fiber is a really important part of it. Uh, but it, it's kind of exciting when when you actually recognize that uh, yeah we we actually have foods that we eat that are really good at fueling the gut bacteria. So instead of just adding the organisms that we can we can buy over the counter, we can actually fuel the gut bacteria that we have. And and how do we how do we do that? You know what what food sources, and that's actually going to be part of our discussion today as, okay. as we look at prebiotics. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Linda. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, so pretty pretty fun stuff, and and so we're we're actually going to be looking at the next that next level. How do we how do we feed morning, the gut bacteria and and what uh, you know, food sources are, are actually uh, you know, the best for that. that. As Tony pointed out, papaya is one. Uh, there, there's a list of other uh, foods that are, are going to be better than others. Yeah. I'm just curious. I've heard of papaya being an enzyme for digestion. Mm -hmm. but what, why is, it? is there a reason papaya is? Yes, and, and basically, I think uh, you know, banana is another one. I mean, there there's several foods that actually have the the fuel that um, you know feeds the uh, the gut bacteria. So even though we're going to get some some vitamins and minerals and, and things you know from from a banana and from a papaya and from other other uh, food sources. Um, it, it's pretty interesting when when you can actually go, wow, this. I'm not only getting that benefit, but I'm also fueling the bacteria right, 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 of, right. of my GI right. tract. So, you know, pretty, pretty exciting. Uh, you know, when, when we look at that secondary or tertiary benefit, right, right. Uh, you know, we're going, wow. So, yeah. you know, I've been following the teacher. Okay. You said that get a variety of foods, so right. instead of making my favorite salad with carrots and right. cabbage and all that, I just bought a ton of broccoli, which I'm going to use as my salad this week. Ah, interesting. All and right. broccoli does fill you up. It does. Yep. Yep. Very, very satisfying. Yes. How many, how many other broccoli lovers do we have? Okay. Yeah. I don't know. There's there's a lot to be said about broccoli, you know. 
uh, somebody somebody in our office was was uh, microwaving some broccoli, and you know the 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 odor, you know, just just everywhere. You know, people would walk in and they'd go, "Oh my word, what what happened here?" <laughs> so uh, pretty pretty fun, pretty fun. Yes, we've got a few folks coming in here. Excellent. I always thought that sauerkraut really wasn't all that good for you because of what it's soaked in and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So why? Well, they, <laughs> they yep. it. I mean, they do put salt in it, and that's probably the biggest controversy. Okay. Right. It's basically just crushed in its own juice. If you make it right, you yeah. crush right. it, and you bring out the, your, its own juice. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and that creates a lacto acid, and that's all that's in it. And that's kind of a pre-digestion aid, really, mm -hmm. and that's why it's really good. Stuff. The controversy is resolved. Right. And that's that's kind of where, you know, I, again, if, if we have that, that moderation, you know, if, if you're overdosing on sauerkraut, you know, we're, we're probably going to have to have a talk. But, uh, yeah. You know, in, in, <clears throat> excuse me, in a lot of the, the jarred foods like you know, sauerkraut uh, or pickles and things like that, um, there's an ingredient, and I don't know if this is correct, sodium chloride, is it? So well, that, mm -hmm. that's the stable. If you talk about pickles, the problem is that they put the vinegar in it. Okay? Right, right. The canned right. sauerkraut <laughs> is, is, the problem with that is pasture. So it's not right. raw. So you right. don't get the enzymes. Right. Well, you don't want well, sauerkraut in a can. You want well, in a jar, right? But it's still pasteurized. But yeah. so, so it's still pasteurized, still has salt content, vinegar content. But what is the sodium chloride? Is that salt? Yep. Okay. Yep. That is the the salt component. So, okay. Good morning, Millie. All right. So we we are uh, as I was pointing out earlier, uh, this this study, believe it or not, we are on the last legs. Uh, we're we're going to be looking at prebiotics. We're we're going to be looking at you know some of the, some of the other components created by our, our gut. Um, you know, and again, uh, you know, we have been talking a lot about polyphenols. Um, you know, the short chain fatty acid production. They touch on that again, um, and and then vitamins, and then we're going to look at conclusions. So I am interested in what topics this class has the most interest in. It's kind of kind of your your uh, feedback would, would be appreciated. So think about it. Uh, you can uh, either you know touch base with me after class or, or let us let us know down the road. I I always I like to make make this class relevant. I I want it uh, based on topics that folks are interested in. Um, you know, if, if we, we uh, you know, get off on, on a topic and, and folks are just kind of going, yeah, that, that's not really relevant in my life, and I don't see how applying that can, can improve my health, then I want to I move in another direction. So really important uh, to keep this class relevant and interesting to you. Let me know what, what topics. Uh, let Doc Meyer know next week when he's here. Yes. I like that book. Those series of books uh -huh. of food as medicine. I think if we did that, mm -hmm. that'd be great. So, is there an interest in in the continuation of, of this, the food as medicine? Mm -hmm. Is there an interest there? Oh yeah, that could go in all kinds of directions. <laughs> <laughs> well said, Gene. Pretty soon we're in here throwing bones around. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, and and I I just. You know, I find that to be very interesting, and, and you know, I, I have a lot of my patients that they, they kind of get this look on their face. You know, when, when I start referring to uh, our food as medicine, you know, for, and for way too many people out there, um, you know, that, that's kind of a new concept. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think it should be. I think that we, we, need, to, we need to ensure that we, we understand you know, like our last week, we, we really had quite a quite a spirited discussion about cabbage. Um, <laughs> you know, cabbage, pretty pretty awesome stuff, and we're we're looking down through that, and and um, you know, I don't have that handout with me today, but I, you know, you, you look, there was a little chart I think on page 194 
of that handout and gave you a list of the vitamins and the protein and, and you know and, and all the minerals and all these things and you go whoa wow by eating cabbage I can I can get you know that I think the top two on that chart were were actually Brussels sprouts and uh, broccoli yeah when you look at commercials on TV food is fun let's you know this right. is great flavor let's all meet it wherever right right, and right it's fun and suddenly when it's food is medicine it's like right you know, that's not right right uh, so it's a it's not like you're eating just to cure yourself but you want to eat something that's got some value right yeah. right so you know when when we when we talk about total body response you know, and I, I use that term a lot, and I hope you all just very much become familiar with that with that mindset. Because when our body's responding to everything that we put into our into our mouth, whether that's water, whether that's a donut, whether that's a, a meat product, whether that's a vegetarian product, I, you know, our our body's going to have a response. And uh, you know, last week we, we also had uh, you know quite a quite a discussion about you know the ability that we all have to to retrain taste preference. We we all were, were raised in different environments. Um, you know, we, we had a discussion uh, before class here about sauerkraut, uh, and, and just a bit ago, you know, and, and you know, kind of that that developed um, uh, taste taste preference. Um, you know, and, and some folks go, there, there's no way I can, I can uh, eat sauerkraut. Others go, you know, I can't eat beans. Um, I have many folks that go, I, I can't eat broccoli or cauliflower or, you know, and the list goes on and on because they're, when they do, there's a negative side effect. And, and that negative side effect for them may be, well, more uh, GI related, more, more flatulence, more uh, a tendency to have diarrhea, you know, uh, loose stools, you know, things like that. <coughs> and, and so, you know, the, the beautiful thing, we, we have that ability to actually retrain our, our gut to change that microfloral uh, balance as, as we have seen over the last uh, you know, several months as we've been going through this, this study. And, and I, I thought, um, you know, this, this text I, I have used in the past, um, Romans uh, 14, 13 to 15, it says, For if your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. So in other words, if I came in today and I said, I, you know, my dad's German, and we grew up, we, he just loved sauerkraut. He would look for, you know, he, he'd look for reasons for us to eat sauerkraut. And anybody in this room that doesn't eat sauerkraut, I'm going to view you as inferior. That sounds German. That's it. <laughs> well said. Yeah, it's, it does sound a little German, doesn't it? <laughs> but how would that make you feel? So when you go to scripture and it tells me, Rob, you're no longer walking in love. Do not destroy by your food someone who, for whom Christ has died. Kind of grabs me and says, Rob, that's not the way to do this. So thus, that shouldn't be an issue in this class. I'm not going to make anybody that doesn't eat sauerkraut feel inferior. But I also like the following text, and that's why I wanted to add this today. Because I think it is so incredibly important that, um, and, and to me, this is the definition of balance. Therefore, do not let what you consider good to be spoken of as evil. So somebody starts going on about sauerkraut, you know, my dad would probably stand up and say, hey, wait a minute, okay? For the kingdom of God does not consist of food and drink. Wow. But righteousness peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So all of a sudden, my smiling muscles are working, and it's not influenced by whether or not you like sauerkraut. Yes? There's different kinds of sauerkraut, the kind that's canned in a can, or the kind that's fresh. Exactly. And so I'm going to go, I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't matter what kind of sauerkraut. 
If you like canned sauerkraut, I'm not going to hold it against you. <laughs> See? And that's, that's kind of when, when we put this into perspective. Um, it's the joy in the Holy Spirit. It's the righteousness and the peace. For the ones that serve Christ in this way, it is pleasing to God and approved by people. So in other words, we're, we're going to have not only God's approval, but we're going to be able to interact with others instead of walking around beating people over the head with canned sauerkraut. Yes? Uh, it's just, it made me think of a thought. Um, it's a saying that goes, what one man's food may be another man's poison. Okay. Because each one of us react differently to whatever food that we're eating. Right. And the other saying goes, uh, we're to eat to live, or we could live to eat one or the other. There you go. So there is a common sense to understanding the foods that are out there and how they affect us and how we can progress and have, as you have stated before, a balance yeah, to, help, to help us to be healthier. Right. And I, and I think that's, that's kind of the balance. When, when we look at Scripture, we look at this, and all of a sudden we're, we're just going, you know what, uh, I'm, I'm not going to get so hyper-focused on the fact that, that somebody uh, doesn't like my, my sauerkraut, uh, or doesn't maybe like the way I eat. <coughs> they may eat meat, they may drink uh, beer, they may have a wine every, you know, a glass of wine every night. Um, you know, and, and to me, there, it's, it'd be real easy to, to go, well, I don't know, is that a healthy lifestyle? Um, you know, and, and kind of kind of a reason to, to kind of have that, uh, that view. And, I, and I'm just going, you know, that, that's not consistent with Scripture. Yes, Gene? Oh, I was just saying, I have lots of friends that definitely eat different than me and everything. And, uh, but most of them, almost every one of them, are on, I mean, they're on their journey to health. I mean, that, uh -huh. the, 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 the reasons they choose the food is right. their, say their consciousness, their, their awareness of their research, feeling that this is their best choice. Right. You know? And I look at my past, you know, sure. and it's like it's gone through a journey. Right. You know? So Yeah, and you know, it's, it's a fun journey. I think when, when we kind of put that into perspective, we, every one of us in this room, are on this this journey and every one of us I, I think we, we would all agree our, our goal is to have the best quality of life the, the the complete health we all want that is that correct yeah. and there are some folks that may be just starting on that journey you know and, and like I talked about last week you know I, I was raised on vegetarian uh, you know uh, uh, processed foods, um, you know, well, some folks may hold that against me, but, you know, and the, the beautiful thing, as we go, we start recognizing any whole food option is going to be better, you know, and we start understanding good, better, and best. Yeah? I have a relative who's very intelligent, IQ-wise, you can't mm -hmm. tell him anything, mm -hmm. and he freely admitted that he lived, he lived eat, and he got up to 350. Wow. And he gave me diabetic, right. gave himself three insulin shots a day, the one at night being more potent to get mm -hmm. him through the night, ate everything in sight, okay. ice cream, whatever. Then he developed a sore that would not heal. Okay. Still kept going. Wow. And then he developed sepsis and they cut his leg just below the knee. Oh my word. And wow. the sepsis continued, so they gave him a colostomy bag. Oh, wow. you, there is no free lunch. How you live comes back to bite you. Isn't that, man, boy, what, a, what an incredibly sad way to, to you know, learn that, yeah, total body response. We, we put garbage in, we're going to start getting that, that um, you know, garbage out. And we had to lose a leg and to have GI parts removed. And, you know, it's, it's really... You know, and, and unfortunately, in the world in which we live, there there's just a lot of this. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of suffering, and uh, you know, it's 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 amazing how much could could be addressed if we just had positive lifestyle changes. Um, you know, and an understanding of just how potent a medicine that that actually is. So, and that's a, again another reason, you know, that that I love this class. 
because I think it provides this venue where, where we can come together. And, and I think to strengthen <coughs> that venue, Marco's actually got a really uh, fun little box in the back there uh, that, uh, and some cards, take them home, write down your favorite recipe or bring a copy of your favorite recipe. And uh, I think Margo would, would like to, uh, you know, maybe, maybe uh, put that in some sort of a, a little book form or, you know, something as, as we go. And also, you know, when we talk about complete health, as has been discussed in this class, yeah, we've got the eight laws of health, you know, including nutrition, hydration, rest, activity, sense of well-being, but we also need that spiritual component. And, and this class, I, I just, I want us to, to, I want you to feel like we're, we're here for you in that regard as well. Those cards can actually be used to write down prayer requests. If you have a prayer request, something's weighing on your heart, um, you know, fill out the card, drop it in, in Margaret's one little box back there. And, and I think that, that would just, again, be, be an avenue that we can, we can work together on this journey toward that goal of complete health. Let's uh, begin with the word for a Dearly Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you've given to us. Thank you for the, the brief shower this morning and the cloud cover. And uh, we ask for your presence to be in this place as we talk about health and the fascinating aspects of our of our own bodies. Just yeah, so Margo said, yeah, it was raining actually early this morning. And, um, you know, I, we, we got in the car, uh, which we, we had parked out outside, and yep, there's definitely some evidence um, that uh, we, we had some showers, and you know, I was like, wow, isn't that cool? <laughs> Absolutely. So, challenges, testimonies. This week, how do we do with, with cabbage? Anybody incorporate <laughs> Br uh, Brussels sprouts? Anything fun there? Yeah. Uh, I do have a, uh, I've been cabbage, kale, Brussels sprouts, okay. spinach, and uh, Brussels sprouts, I've been just throwing them in the blender with my other stuff, my pineapple, apple, spinach. Nice. Uh, Turmeric. Enjoy. And, 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 and yeah, but, but you know, I've, not, I've never been a Brussels sprouts person, but it looks like it's the richest content one. Now i got to put we're talking about purple or red cabbage. Right, it's, right. It just says right here that it's the least nutritious of all the cabbages. Isn't that amazing? But see, I thought we were saying, yep. I thought that, or now is that misinformation or am I? You know, and, and I think that basically when, when we talk about nutrition, we're, we're talking about, you know, the protein uh, content, the, right. the, you know, the vitamin, you know, content and everything else. But there's no denying, you know, the, the red cabbage is going to have a, a much different spectrum of phytonutrients. Okay, that's, that's that's not what they're talking about here. That's correct. Okay, so yep. that's that's okay. So yep. Stay yeah. on the red cabbage, right? Absolutely. Okay. Good, variety good stuff. Yeah. And, and it okay. looks so awesome. It's, right? a, it's neat stuff. It really yeah. Is. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. My, my friend happened to share her um, processed cauliflower, kind of simple recipe, but put lime right. on it after you warm it up. That lime just makes it taste like Mexican food. You can't even tell what you're eating. Oh. So adding that to a burrito, just the that, lime just Oh, knocked, yeah, absolutely. Not that good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah, so you can hide cauliflower. Yeah, yeah. 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 I got to go home. Yeah. I got to leave. I got to go. I got to eat. Wow, so I'm just converting. I look so fortunate. Cauliflower steaks. Cauliflower steaks? Yeah, I just slice them about one inch and a half thick. Uh-huh. And you make them and shred it. Just, you know. On an oven, uh, and then when they come out, you can uh, do the lemon juice, so you can do a little garlic. I love garlic. Oh, yeah. But they're wonderful. Cool. Isn't that something? That'd be a fun recipe, you know, a, a very, very simple, but I, I think that would be kind of fun to have, you know, a cauliflower steak uh, seasoned <laughs> with, a, with a variety of fun things. Yes, cauliflower. I found so a book that yes. recommends yes. tumor and psoriasis. Mm -hmm. uh, Alzheimer's, arthritis, cancer, Crohn's disease, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, osteoporosis. Sounds I like that uh, was interesting. Yeah, and yeah. and so we're we're gonna you know I I think I'm I'm just here and this would be kind of a fun thing you know not only to look at foods but some of the spices 
like yeah. like uh, turmeric. It's an anti-inflammatory. Um, that's why. It's all those. Very strong and potent anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. Uh, it has so many different applications. Yes. The real short testimony. <clears throat> I have psoriasis. I okay. Have on this well, this one's gone, but I have it right here, uh -huh. or I had it here, and I have a little patch here. Okay. <clears throat> and I've been doing the turmeric, and I've been doing uh, also garlic and dandelion. Nice. Uh, I also throw a little cilantro and a little um, oh, what do you call it? parsley. Ah, and I put some apple and I put lemon and all that in it, okay. blend it up and drink it. And I've been doing that for a while. Well, this one disappeared and this one's almost gone. Isn't that how long? How long that was a while? Oh, uh, it, it took it took uh, a couple months. Okay, that's nice. what, what is that? Yeah. yeah that's so really yeah, in the overall in the overall yeah. spectrum, you know, that's that's that short. is uh, way awesome. Yeah. Great testimony and and fun fact. So that that's kind of the fun things. So you find some recipes that include creative ways of, of uh, incorporating turmeric, uh, be, be kind of fun. So I have one question. Okay, so the psoriasis is an autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. Cancer is an autoimmune disease. As a matter of fact, arthritis is, and you got a, a whole list of diseases, they're all autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that means they're all in this specific category and they're causing inflammation in our system. And so we've got these different variety of spices and foods. They would all basically work for ridding those diseases out of our system? And I think that's, that would be a reasonable statement okay. and a reasonable thought process, wouldn't it, class? Because yeah. we're talking about how we can decrease inflammation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when we are of, of similar mindset and we, we are basing and, and looking at, you know, a, a statement made like on, on red cabbage that it's the least nutritious, uh, but then we back up and we start recognizing that, yeah, it may not have the vitamin mineral content, but it has a very strong phytonutrient, you know, content. And all of a sudden now we start going, oh, this makes a lot more sense. He's not dissing the red cabbage. He's just saying that there's others out there that have more of a protein, um, you know, and vitamin and mineral content. Um, but boy, talk about, you know, the, that red cabbage just pops, you know. And, and it's just kind of fun when, when you're looking at all of these, these different, um, you know, cabbages uh, or, or in that uh, family. And, you know, we, we had quite a discussion about Brussels sprouts. Um, you know, and, and I think that's really an acquired taste, something that, that you know, you, you can kind of get used to them. If, if you have them every once in a while, let me tell you, you know, and I, I fall into that category. Um, I'll have a couple of them, and I, and I, I will make it through. Um, but it's, yeah, but it's, it's not, you know, it's just not registering on my, my happy scale. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, you know, just looking at a Brussels sprout, Margo breaks out of this big grin. You know, it just I, makes I, sure I, I can't get enough of them. Oh, me neither. Yeah. They're like candy. Yeah, they're that's like the way I do. Goodness. Right. You've yeah. seen them raw, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You've seen them raw? Yeah, that's good. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 So, so eating them cooked, I, I don't know if I could even get around one raw. Well, I mean, when you mix it with all these other things, you know, that's you notice it. That's it. That's would have wine and you know, and the Chinese cabbage, the kohlrabi, um, you know, and, and then on that on that chart last week, you know, you, you look at the vitamin content, you look at everything, and you're just seeing high numbers with, with Brussels sprouts, you're just seeing really high numbers with, with broccoli, and that's why I, I included today the, the broccoli, and by the way, all these are, are coming from the, the foods in and uh, healing power, um, and and that's uh, you know this this uh, a, I just I really like uh, George uh, Pamplona Rogers, um, just an incredible um, um, compilation of, of information there. I, I better just say this is kind of a testimonial, a two mm -hmm. three testimonial maybe. Um, uh, two weeks ago, I, I saw my family physician. I have a terminal illness. Um, trying to uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension. Okay. Um, I, two years ago, I had maybe nine months to live. Well, wow. some medication came in. I'm on it, but I had a heart cath in December, and so it's kind of a good, good base. But uh, I'm with UC Davis, their, their advanced pulmonology no. pulmonary uh, clinic, 
Um, anyway, a couple of weeks. And he, this is the doctor that diagnosed me uh, uh, in 2015. And uh, he listened to my chest. It's only two weeks ago. So I had I'd been going almost seven weeks with this. Uh -huh. And he says he can't. And every doctor, when they hear about it, they want to hear my chest. Sure. Because there's telltale signs you can hear it. Oh, yeah. The lungs and heart. And um, he said he couldn't hear it anymore. He, so, so you know, it doesn't mean it's gone. But sure. he says, I can't. You sound, yeah, it sounds, it sounds normal. You sound like you have normal heart and lungs right now. So it's kind yeah. of, it, that's the first time that's happened. And, wow. uh, and you mean, he spent a minute trying. Look, really, this is, this yeah. is crazy. Because he's, yeah, he's very interested in my vegan diet. You know, he's like, hey, you, know, you be careful. Yeah. We, you know, sure. You make sure, sure you get some, you know, you know, it's like, <laughs> you know, be sure to add this, though, too. Right. And, you know, you know right. nope, not even at one egg. I'm saying, no, 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 not even one egg. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. cool. so I'm educating cool. him a little bit. He's sure. just kind of enjoying the ride with me. So, nice. So, nice. But uh, in, in December, we'll do another heart cap um, mm -hmm. in East Davis, and it'll be, it'll be, you know, there'll be something to compare to. Nice. You know, nice. It's kind of interesting. So, yeah. pre testimony. And, yeah, awesome. Maybe, awesome awesome testimony. Praise God. Thank you for sharing. Because I, I think that's that's you know why I have this slide because I I want folks to be thinking I want folks to be to be going you know what yeah I had this happen this week or I had this this condition that that I'm working on and you know when when they're sitting there going you know it's not worse yeah and and they're going yeah it sounds different and in a good way we're we're going we'll take it yeah you know absolutely. praise God absolutely yes. Well, this is out of left field, but I thought maybe somebody would know. When you go to the store these days and you get cabbage or you get iceberg lettuce, mm -hmm. two leaves and it's yellow. What are they doing with, how do they process it to bring it to market? Because it's always yellow. It used to be it was greener when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. There was lots of iceberg lettuce mm -hmm. that was green. Now it's yellow. Same with the cabbage. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I I go back to um, an onion that uh, Linda McConnell uh, gave us. Uh, we we were up at their their place, and this has been years ago. But uh, you know, she she's got just a uh, wonderful organic garden. I mean, it's just absolutely it's it's like paradise. You know, you walk in, 